Tell me how it feels, and this is probably something most prop tech entrepreneurs struggle with. VCs don't get the space. You're here, your customers are strangling you, right? People are reaching out to you from the Middle East and telling you, we need this now. And you've proven it with the fact that customers have voted with their wallets. How does it feel that, you know, the very people that are supposed to take risk, the venture capitalists, are not seeing the opportunity that you see. Speak to the other entrepreneurs out there who face this problem. Yeah, it's, it's really been very interesting, the response I've gotten from different investor types. And the VCs seem to want software. And they will confuse uh, software for tech. You know, software is tech, but other things that are not software can be tech too. Uh, and, and I understand where they're coming from because software can scale really fast. You know, it's, that's the model, you know, you just, you blast it out, you, you build one thing, you blast that thing out to you know, millions of users, ours is a little bit different. So you know, that, that um, franchise model also came about as a result of some pushback I got from BC saying, this is too capital intensive for our uh, fund structure. You know, that's not how we work. So now you know, th this plan means that that further um, investment required wouldn't come from them, it would come from these other parties. They would only be funding this initial kind of, uh, you know, plant this initial factory where we're doing you know R&D and pushing that out to our little other uh, factories um, but you know I, I think uh, I think what I'm pitching here is uh, potentially very very large and what I've seen from some of the other VC investments in uh, uh, manufactured housing startups uh, I don't really get those plays either because because none of them really seem they, they seem even less scalable than us especially the ones that can't ship the product so um probably you know, that might also be that investors um haven't looked and haven't established who the leader is yet and are probably burnt but that's the best time to make investments because you know by the time there's a leader it's hard for new contenders here at least it reminds me of the, of the time when we started in the advertising industry um we did things better we did have a new way of doing things but all the precedents before us sucked. Investors lost so much money in advertising technology companies. Literally every public company was a flop. Um, I invested in the public markets too when I was the CEO of my company, just, just to keep a tab on competitors. I lost, literally lost 90% in public stock equities. Yep. Across maybe like five to 10 different companies. And these were the main five to 10 companies. Um, and guess what happened now? You know, now, now we've got companies like Trade Desk that are valued uh, I don't know what the latest valuation is, but it's one of the best performing stocks I have. Um, it, it's 3x, you know, higher than it was from the March lows. Um, you know, billions of dollars in market cap, maybe 10 plus. So, you know, when there is a winner, that winner will take all and it will suck the oxygen out of the room. I mean, we talked about this when I made the investment in Boxable, right? You, you guys are one of those binary opportunities that I love, right? If you're in venture capital, you need to be taking risk. You need to be finding companies that can be a complete zero or a thousand X return, right? And I can say that I generated those types of returns for the investors invested in my company. Um, but investors like the safety and are not necessarily as uh, true to the model of venture capital, right? Sometimes I'll prefer a safe three X return uh, and limited upside, you know, but lots of downside protection, which is yeah. not how I'm supposed to play this. Now, how does it feel as an entrepreneur knowing that what you're working on could go to nothing? You could lose everything. There are so many risks. You know, you've probably had, a, you know, you've done a good job. You've raised a good amount of funding for where you are. But I'm sure you've had people give you all the reasons why this can't work. How do you feel knowing that you're working on an idea that isn't stable? It's a crazy idea. It will change the world. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty brutal, actually doing like, you know, multiple calls with people per day who have their all, all their own reasons to say no to you. So I can understand how that would, you know, turn some people off. But, you know, frankly, I'm the kind of person that just keeps pushing and pushing and pushing forever. And, you know, I feel very confident about this product as we develop it, it just gets better and better and it never stops getting better and it's amazing. And, you know, I've, I've executed on a few other businesses in my past successfully and, you know, I've done very, very well. So I'm confident that I'll be able to do that again. But this time when I do it, it's going to be with this monster that we're, that we're growing here. This is the PropTech VC podcast. We give you unique insights into how innovative technologies are disrupting real estate. 
We interview top entrepreneurs, investors, and knowledgeable experts to share the inside scoop in this fast-moving industry. It's hosted by leading PropTech VC, Zane Jaffer. Let's dive into today's content.